2021 ASA season kicked off under sunny February skies in Foley, Alabama, just a stone's throw from the beaches of Gulf Shores. After a disappointing, restriction-riddled 2020 season, around 2,000 archers from all over North America showed up for the annual Hoyt Pro-Am, eager to get back to the game they love. ASA President Mike Tyrell and his crew had the red carpet laid out for everyone at the Graham Creek Nature Preserve with 3D courses scattered throughout the Southern Pines. Archers hit the practice ranges Thursday morning to make last minute adjustments, check their sight tapes and get their mental games in order before heading out for the Zebra Bowstrings team shoot, which matches accomplished pros with amateurs for a friendly competition that has cash rewards, but which is more about getting to meet new friends. The moment you collapse, everything goes wrong. Not long after sunrise Friday, archers in the four pro classes, open pro, senior pro, women's pro, and known pro, headed out to ranges A, B, and C for their first scoring rounds of ASA archery since last August. The ranges were packed and featured many new faces. Gotta be. Chance Bobuff made his return to the Open Pro division after spending a few years shooting known pro. So far, it's been pretty good. I looked at a few targets at home and it went well and judged really well yesterday here. And seems to be coming back pretty pretty quickly. This is a big strategy game in here. That where there's known pro, you got to shoot at every one of them. Uh, here, it's, it's left more like chess. He was joined by rookies Louis Price and Jimmy Lutz who are widely known for their indoor and outdoor target archery accomplishments, but who might become new forces to be reckoned with in the ASA world. With an incredible 97 archers in the field, the known pro range groups were mostly groups of five rather than the usual four. Yeah, you're still a skosh. By the end of the pro rounds, Levi Morgan, Cara Kelly, Tim Gillingham, and Christopher Perkins had separated themselves from their peers to lead the four divisions. After the pros finished shooting around noon, we saw the first rounds shot by archers in the ASA's newest class, Women's Known 50. With manufacturers stepping up to offer contingencies for the division, Women's K50 drew a modest but promising field of competitors, which included a couple of the best archers from the target archery world. Paige Pierce, Tanya Gallantine, Haley Golden, Cassidy Cox, Katie Boardwell, Savannah Vanderweer. Look for that class to grow by leaps and bounds as these women invite more of their friends from across the archery disciplines to compete. Day two of qualification showed the strong getting stronger. Levi Morgan ended with an incredible 434 and punched his ticket for the shoot-off with a 10-point lead over second-place Dan McCarthy. With a 4.13, Cara Kelly was one of only two women on the plus side of 400, and she took a seven-point lead into the shoot-off over Kaylee Johnston. Christopher Perkins expanded his overall lead by two points to 10 with an unreal 4.50, made possible by hitting 28 out of a total 40 bonus rings. Tim Gillingham looked to be running away from the rest of the senior pro class en route to a two-day score of 421, but Richard Owens shot the best round of his life Saturday to get to within one of the hammer with a 420. As we set the stage for this finals of competition for four classes here tonight, and we'd like to welcome a brand new audience to ASA competition as we're on the Sportsman's Channel. Saturday afternoon, Competition Archery Media and the Sportsman's Channel partnered for the first ever live event broadcast aired by the Sportsman Channel as 3D Archery made its return to a major cable TV network. Good shooter right there. And even though all four pro leaders held on to take home their respective titles, 
There was plenty of drama and quality archery to see yeah. on the pro Direct pressure the point shoot down. Misfired if he misjudged it, if he was, I'm not sure what happened there. Cara Kelly refused to lift her foot off the gas in the finals, even though she had a comfortable lead hitting three out of five twelves to snuff out the competition in women's pro. To be in this position and to be here and to shoot that kind of score right out of the gate, it, it just, I feel honored, so yeah. pretty pumped. Senior pro Richard Owens Got put it. as much pressure on Tim Gillingham as he could, shooting an incredible 14 on the last arrow of the shoot off, forcing Tim to hit a 10, which he did. The rotation is everything, and I had the easiest target first, which is not exactly ideal. I know I needed that 12 on a turkey, and uh, it's had a rough time getting yardage out here. It's just like totally different than what we're seeing out in the woods. In open pro, Levi never let anyone get close, but the battle for second came down to a one arrow closest to 12 ring shoot off between Dan McCarthy and Jason Bennett. Dan was just a little bit closer to take home the silver. Now it's just saying a lot of prayers and, and uh, relying on some experience and, and just the love of the game, I think. I do work hard every spare minute I have. Christopher Perkins rode his weekend confidence through the known pro finals, hitting three more 12s to lift his two-day total to 31, and he coasted to victory. I just focus on my shot and you know a little bit on my equipment as well and the big thing is just get out there and shoot it and, and, and learn it and uh, you know I think uh, I think just spending time behind the bow and, and really knowing it and knowing your equipment I think that's where I benefit. But behind him Calvin Gross and Curtis Broadnax battled to the end for second and third. The two were tied in score after all the arrows they shot this weekend but Broadnax took the silver because he had one more bonus ring than Gross proving that in ASA competition, every single arrow counts. A pleasant breeze blew through the pines of Graham Creek Sunday as all the amateur divisions finished their weekend rounds. There was plenty of laughter, fist bumps, and well wishes offered before those who were still around gathered for the ASA podiums to celebrate those who found success during the weekend. So now we all look forward to Paris, Texas in April. It's time to hit the practice range to work on everything we learned this weekend so we can be that much better the next time we're all together.